Today we're looking at photographing brown hares, the European brown hare. There's no great mystery or skill involved in photographing hares. They're relatively simple to photograph. The hard part is finding them because they're far more scarce today than they used to be. But if you've got a patch of land where there's a good number of brown hares, then the photography is relatively straightforward. I could try and make a bit of a mystery out of it by telling you that you need great field craft skills. Um, I could take you around this field and show you the droppings of, of brown hares and say, look, there must be good numbers of brown hares here because this is the droppings. Or I could show you a hare's form, which is where they lie down in the grass and create a depression in the grass. And sometimes the grass grows up by the side of them and forms like a canopy above them. So it almost becomes a tunnel that they go into. And that's where they, they rest up or even leave their leverets, their young there. Uh, or I could show you the uh, hare's footprints. Not that I've ever seen hare's footprints other than in the snow. But I'm not going to do any of that because it is easier to find brown hares than to find the tracks and signs of brown hares. They do live in woodlands but mostly we associate them with open fields like this and if I was to go to the top part of this field, the highest part, and scan with binoculars I could probably see a brown hare. It would be static but it would just be a little hump in the ground and the colour would be slightly different to the, the soil. But if you walk around here early in the morning or late afternoon then you're going to see them moving. They're a lot more active at the two ends of the day and they'll just be running around the field so they're easy to see, easy to know they're there. Photographing them, well if you see a hare run along this, this track one evening there's a very good chance the following evening it will run along the same track. They're quite loyal to an area. They are far more mobile than rabbits. A rabbit will come out of its burrow and graze the grass within 10, 20 metres of the hole, then run back down the hole again. Hares move around. They'll be in the top end of this field. 30 seconds later, they'll be down the bottom end of this field, and they go into the neighbouring fields as well. But they keep coming back. So if there's a reasonable number of hares around, a very good chance one will come along here. Now, hares don't have great eyesight. So if I was to stand against the hedgerow over here, they wouldn't see me and they'd just come running past. But I don't want to be against the hedgerow. I want to be out in the open field or on this track. And if I was to stand here, out in the open, they wouldn't come close to me. The eyesight's not great, but they would see this tall object and they'd be wary of it. But the solution is very simple. Just sit down. There's no doubt about it, hares will come much closer to you when you're sitting down than standing up because you're half the height, you're half the threat. You can take it a stage further, and hence I'm on a camping mat because if you lie down, you're even less of a threat. You're just like a log lying on the floor. And a hare will come so close to you if you're lying down here, you think it's gonna stand on top of you. So this is just a camping mat you buy from camping shops. It's very lightweight, very robust. This must be 30 years old now. I've been lying down on this rather a lot. And we just need a, a way of supporting the, the camera. So any tripod you buy from wildlife photography needs to go down low to the ground. So the legs will go all the way up like that. Trouble is you've got a, a centre column. Now there's more than one solution to this, but this centre column divides into two, so I can unscrew it. And now the tripod will go down very low to the floor. Some centre columns come, well they supply you with a stubby short centre column. The trouble with that is you've got two. One of them's got to be in your camera bag all the time and, and you tend to lose the short stubby one. So I prefer a centre column that unscrews. So I've just got to put the camera on top of there and you're ready to go. Now I know from past experience that I can lie down on my belly here for about two hours. After which my back is killing me, the back of my neck is killing me because I have to crane my neck up. It's a very uncomfortable position to stay in. If I'm in a lie down hide, I can have a rest. I can turn on my back or my side for a while and then go back into position. But when you're out in the open like this, you just want to keep still. It's, it's very, very uncomfortable. One hot tip, just before you get into position, 
empty your bladder. It makes a huge difference to your comfort. I'm just going to nip behind the camera. That's it, we're ready to go. We could be using a bean bag here if you're just doing stills photography, but I do a lot more video than stills these days, and you really need a tripod head in order to be able to pan smoothly. That doesn't really work on a bean bag for video. The camera we're using is an Olympus M1X, and that's a tremendous advantage because the shutter is totally silent. If you have the uh, digital SLR with a mechanical shutter, the hairs will react to the sound of the shutter. They've got very good hearing. If their eyesight's poor, they make up for it with the hearing. They're not usually worried about your scent. They don't seem to pick up your scent at all, so you don't have to think about the wind direction. Tripod head is a Manfrotto 501 fluid head. I've had various gimbals over the years. Gimbals is the most popular head with wildlife photographers for some reason. I had the original Wimbley head. Then I bought a Jobo gimbal head. Then a Beike gimbal and then finally a mongoose gimbal head which is a tiny little thing very very expensive but very very lightweight great for traveling i tend to buy these things secondhand try them for a few months every time i go back to video heads even for stills photography i much prefer video heads why they are not the the standard head for wildlife photography i do not know um, i can just move it about wherever i leave the, the camera it stays there this handle I can move to any position and when you're following a moving subject like this hair if it's just to run sideways across me it is so much easier to follow it when you've got a push against the resistance of a video head than it is with a, a free-flowing gimbal head anyway all the pictures I'm about to show you were taken in this field but they won't be taken tonight I don't know if I'm going to get anything but they've been taken here over the years now I can't tell a male hair from a female hair, but I do know that if I was to squeak my lips and make this sound, or to do it electronically off your mobile phone, that is the call of a young leveret. And if it's a female hair in the distance, there's a very strong chance it will run towards you. If it's the male, they'll take no notice. I always like the effect of lying down on the grass and getting the out of focus vegetation in front of the creature you're photographing. This is a young hare. And it was quite tolerant of me, so I'm working on a bean bag here instead of a tripod head. So I was able to raise myself up and put my elbows into the ground and lift my camera up higher so I could also get the shot without the out of focus grass in front. And this is very typical of a hare nibbling a bit of grass. It will run 10-15 metres, stop, nibble a bit of vegetation and then run on again. They don't tend to stay still very long when they're feeding. Keep moving on to the next patch. Since he seemed to enjoy devouring this plant, you'd think he'd stay there, but no, just half a leaf and then on to the next plant. And there's no problem getting close to them, so long as you're lying down and you keep still, they will come incredibly close. This is my favourite place to photograph them in the field. The field runs east to west and it goes over a ridge and down the other side so in the morning or the evening you can choose to have frontal lighting or back lighting and i like to get them running along the top of this ridge and sometimes it's just soil and other occasions it's grass depends on the time of year and what the farmer is doing
and I can adjust my position so I don't necessarily have sky behind that ridge. If I move up to one end of the field I can get green vegetation behind. And when you're using that video head it is relatively easy to be able to pan with the hair as it's running. Although it is difficult when you're lying on your belly. If you know you're going to do this shot of a running hare, you're better off sitting down on a stool. They might not come quite so close, but it is easier to pan when you're sitting down. The only thing we don't get here in the Midlands, which I've, I've just never seen it, is boxing hares, the Mad March hares. I've seen it in other parts of the country, I've seen it abroad. But in, in Warwickshire, I've never seen boxing hares. We just get two hares following each other around. I assume it's a, a buck following a, a doe. And that's about it. And thank you very much.